Coming up on this edition of Community Insider, Tisha Emberton takes us behind the scenes of Cotton's Marina. It has been open since 1987, known for its excellent fishing opportunities. The marina is hosting six-hour fishing tournaments every Saturday running through Thanksgiving. You'll find out more information about that and much more on this edition of Community Insider. Stay tuned. Today we're on the Dry Creek Falls Trail in White County. This is a brand new trail. In fact, they just had the ribbon cutting for this trail just a few minutes ago. And so I may be the first one on this trail, at least from this end of it. So we're gonna go as far as Dry Creek Falls. We might go to Ryland Cascades. Then we'll turn around and come back. And we'll have a look at this brand new trail, the Dry Creek Falls Trail. Come on. edition of Community Insider. Join us as we travel Middle Tennessee, uncovering history and experiencing the adventure of unique stories and events coming to you inside your community. to this edition of Community Insider. We're here at Cotton's Marina in Rock Island, Tennessee. Uh, to my left is Greg Cotton. Say hello to everybody out there. Hi, folks. All right, and uh, to my right. Trevor Medley. Hunter Bolden. All right, and uh, so we just kicked off the fishing tournament here in Rock Island. Do you want to tell us more about that, Greg? Yeah, we start on the first Saturday of March and we fish all the way up to Thanksgiving. We got a little club, you join the club and uh, fish 12 tournaments and you fish for some big money at the end of the year. And then we just divide that money up and give it out and I think uh, first place last year paid like eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars $1,900. Oh wow. Yeah. That's uh, a lot. Yeah, we don't, we don't keep none of the money. I mean, I, I keep my ramp fee, but other than that, we give it back to the the men that donated it, somebody gets that money back. Okay, and you were also telling me about how the tournament is also catch and release. Tell us more about that. Oh yeah, once the people catch the fish and bring them to the scale, once they hit the scale, they're my fish, and 100% goes back in the river. Okay. But 95% of the bass fishermen don't keep, keep the bass anyway. They're just, by my opinion, they're not that well that good at eating. Crappie and walleye is the better eating fish. So out of the tournament that just kicked off uh, the first weekend in March, what kind of fish did the fishermen catch? Most with a uh, large mouth. And let me say this, if the more people come, the more places we pay. So if we get 14 boats or more, it's always three, first, second, third, and a uh, big fish. We. We opened in uh, 1987, and it's been a progressive growing process ever since. And uh, we had tournaments back then, river rats come, and uh, I didn't run it then. I think I've only ran the tournament deal for, what, 15 years? And, uh, but they've been tournaments down here forever. I mean, 
and they used to catch what these guys call big fish, you know, seven, eight pounders. Now we do good to get a six or, we get a six every now and then. Five. Well, they catch all kinds of fish, crappie, bluegill, brim, but we mostly concern ourselves with the bass. That's what the sport fisherman likes to fish for, it seems like, and that's what we go for. That's what these fellas go for. Uh, and these are our winners. This is Hunter Bolden and Trevor Medley. Where are you guys from? Uh, I'm from Rock Island originally, and I live in McMinnville now. Okay, and you, sir? No, I'm from McMinnville, and I currently live in Florida. All right, and so how did you guys meet? Uh, basically grew up together. Well, I say that. We met when we were real young in school. He's a little bit older than me, so I kind of, we kind of lost touch, and then we both started, uh, Working, I worked started working in the sheriff's department, and he started working at uh, McMinnville Police Department, and then we kind of met back that way, and we're both still in law enforcement and hang out and fish quite a bit now. Do you know? Do you remember how much uh, your weight was on those that won y'all the big gold? Uh, we had three that weighed eight sixty six. That's a lot, guys. That's a lot. Congratulations. Appreciate it. That's, That's awesome. it. Yeah, that they, they, they good fish in here. They'll catch some smallmouth here for long, maybe. Then them, them smallmouth will go back up to Irvin College and then they won't catch none until winter of next year when we have the fish off. One of the unique features of the fishing tournaments at Cotton's Marina is that they are catch and release only and no live bait is allowed. The lake is filled with different types of fish including crappies, bluegill, and brim, but most sport fishermen who participate in the tournament aim to catch the bass. Two fishermen per boat are allowed to participate in the tournament. Cod's Marina also offers a fishing club where members pay $50 to participate in weekly tournaments and fish for a chance to win big money at the end of the year. Last year, the first place winner of the end of the year tournament won $1,800. You don't have to be in the club to participate in the weekly fishing tournaments, but do in order to participate in the big money fishing tournament in November. Now, Cotton's Marina also provides all your needs for being on the water, whether it's fishing or relaxing. It's a family-owned business that's been around for 30 years, and they have a wide range of different enjoyable things for you to experience. You can reach Cotton's Marina at 931-686-2373, and their hours during summertime are 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Thursday. If you're looking for a fun and competitive fishing experience, be sure to check out Cotton's Marina at 1967 Rock Island Road, Rock Island, Tennessee, 38581. We got 
second big fish is Miller and Miller, 433. Is that 33? <laughs> I get to keep playing, right? No, no. no. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ricky and Mitchell, seven even. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're starting to hear all good, ain't you? Better than last year. Second place is James with 8.20. Place is Blunder and Prevo. Appreciate right here at where all the action happens down at Cotton's Marina. Greg Cotton here has all of the information. Where can they find you? Oh, uh, we got a uh, Facebook page, uh, cottonsmarina.com, I think see it, and then they, they can call the office here at 686-2373, and we'll give them any information they want, <laughs> if we got it. <laughs> Speaking of information, um, so I know that there's big trade secrets in fishing, and uh, who taught you guys how to fish? Uh, for me, it was definitely my dad initially, and then I remember growing up, he started watching those old, like, Strike King protein journals and stuff like that on TV, and yeah. he just kind of, I, I just kind of took off from there when I started getting 12, 13, and stuff like that. My dad, he had two boats at one time, and Friday evenings, uh, if he was fit, he had his own tournament partner. He would bring his old aluminum boat down here and Greg would let us park it in a slip. And I'd hook up the batteries. And then Saturday morning, my dad would bring me down here and drop me off. And I sometimes I was down here waiting in the dark for like two hours. Because well, they had to get to their tournament early. So they had to drop me off first and I was down here forever. And then just started fishing these tournaments down here by myself, and stuff like that. And it just, ain't never quit. So you got your partner now. How's it feel, guys? Feels good. Yeah? So tell me about your fishing ex expeditions uh, whenever you were growing up. 
I learned all the basics from my dad. He was always involved with putting me outdoors and stuff, and uh, he drives a truck for a living, so didn't get to fish as much. And like Hunter said, when we linked up, he taught me the rest of what I needed to know to <laughs> make a good partner. He made me a heck of a net man. <laughs> <laughs> So is there a, a secret that you guys know that maybe all the other ones out there don't know that uh, made you guys the winners today? No. Um, I, I mean, maybe the only secret I have is just the, the, the days upon days of coming down here when I was young and just fishing this place so much, I guess. But I, no, there was no, there's no secret baits or secret spots, nothing like that. We just, especially when this place floods like this, there's a lot of current and they, there's only a few places they're going to get. I mean, there, there's only a few places they can get too when there's that much current. So you just hit enough of them places, you'll run into a few of them. So you think it's all in about where you're fishing at, not necessarily the bait or mm -hmm. anything like that? Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, sometimes they're, you'll find a certain bait or something that works better than anything else but when when the water's dirty like this and there's current it's just all about getting around them they'll eat i mean a lot of different things but when it's like this you just got to get around them all you right. just gotta for some of those that are wondering what kind of bait did you guys use uh we weighed our biggest one on a spinner bait and then i think everything else we caught was on a jig yeah, we, we can't use live bait, so okay. we got to... Right. So, so is that one of the rules? Yeah, yeah that's taboo. <laughs> that's cheating to use live bait. Yeah, no live bait. All right. No live bait. Well, that's good to know. Uh, what other kinds of bait can they use? Anything that ain't alive. Well, for some people, they can't catch them on live bait either. <laughs> With that being said, you know, they got the, they got the crank bait, spinner bait, plastic baits, but you ain't allowed nothing. Nothing that eats is allowed to be fished with. Not dead manas, not dead worms. No, yeah. not not dead. And this is a catch and release type tournament, correct? Yeah, All right. 100%. As long as, if I know about it, it's catch and release. If, you know, I guess some people take them home, but not the ones that go in the basket to get, be weighed. Those all go back in the lake. All right. So we are here at Cotton's Marina. We thank you so much for tuning in to this edition of Community Insider. Uh, when can they come down to be included in the fishing tournament, Greg? Every Saturday morning from now to Thanksgiving. This month we start at 8 o'clock. Next month we'll go to 7 o'clock. And in the summertime we'll go to 6 o'clock. And it's six hour tournament. They can call. Call, call the office, 686-2373, or you can call me at 931-212-5398, oh. and I'll answer your question. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Come on down to Cotton's Marina, bring your family and your boys, your girls, and uh, let's get included in this fishing tournament.
I want to congratulate everyone who's involved in this project. And I want to um, also recognize that it takes a lot of work, a lot of hard work in these partnerships to make projects like this a success. Before we get too far though, I want to take a second and do some housekeeping. Um, we're going to have some words from our great partners today and commence the ribbon cutting um, with a hike to follow. If you haven't hi registered for the hike yet, please come over to this table here, sign in and register for the hike so that we make sure that um, everybody, we have everybody accounted for. Um, also, um, this hike is about five miles, so please make sure that if you're going to do it, wear your close-toed shoes. We've got snacks, we've got water sitting um, on the table over there and so uh, please feel free to help yourself um, but at the end of this after the ribbon cutting we will shortly begin our hike thereafter um, so without further ado i'd like to welcome our first guest white county mayor denny wayne robinson to come share a few words thank you sir he told me i had two minutes so i'll be quick uh, thank y'all for being here this is very exciting very exciting. You know, I grew up, I was born and raised here, grew up here. I had family, lived in the area. This is kind of like my backyard, you know. And, you know, I've, I've been all over this place, hiked and camped it as, as a child. But I didn't, until I went off the basic training and started seeing some other places, I never realized what a jewel, what a, what a diamond this was. I took it for granted. And, and I'm so glad that next step in and all the organizations that people help. I don't want to start naming because I'll forget somebody, but all the groups that that was smarter than me that realized what a jewel we have here. And, and, and as, the, as the county mayor, I'm excited for the community. This, bring, this brings in people from basically all over the world to come see this area. I appreciate it, but as a, as a citizen of White County, I appreciate the, the heritage and what I grew up and what I saw it, you know, being preserved so that my kids and grandkids and stuff and everybody else can uh, enjoy that. So thank y'all so much. Appreciate y'all being here. It's a very exciting time. And I'm, hopefully there's more good news to come later. Thank y'all. Thank you, Mayor. So, um, as, as we've all been kind of working together, we know this project wouldn't be possible without partnerships and collaborations. Our next guest is no stranger to this. Director Laurel Lee, Laurel Creech from um, the the Nature Conservancy has an accomplished career in sustainability and conservation. She served as the board of directors for the Nashville Parks Foundation, the Cumberland Trails Conference, and the Nature, Acad Nature Academy. She also has served as on advisory boards of the Urban Green Lab, Walk Bike Nashville, and Tennessee Women in Green, which she co-founded in 2008. There's value in partnerships, and without them, people would not be able to appreciate places like Chestnut Mountain. So please welcome Director Chris. Awesome. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, and it is certainly a pleasure to be here on what a beautiful day, and the day before official Earth Day. What better day to be out in the words and celebrating our planet. Um, it is also truly an honor to be here at a place that I have hiked and enjoyed for many, 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 many years, and just as the mayor said, it is a gem and a blessing to have this here in, in Tennessee. Uh, so, in 2018, Bridgestone Americans generously donated nearly 5,800 acres. It was the largest land donation in the Nature Conservancy's history of working in Tennessee. And you'll get to hear more from Bridgestone in just a few minutes about that. This absolutely spectacular property, now known as the Bridgestone Nature Reserve here at Chestnut Mountain, represents the crown jewel of truly a mosaic of over 60,000 acres a protective public lands that includes Virgin Falls, Fall Creek Falls, Bledsoe State Forest, and of course, Bridgestone Firestone Centennial Wilderness Wildlife Management Area. The reserve itself provides habitat for more than 100 species of conservation concern, including the Golden Eagle, the Eastern Slender Glass Lizard, the barking tree fog, frog, and the green salamander, plus many, many rare plants, such as the Cumberland rosemary and the white cherry clover. We are so appreciative and applaud Bridgestone Americans for its commitment to the environment and are honored that they entrusted the Nature Conservancy to manage this very important forest to all of us. Scientific, scientific research and on-the-ground projects taking place at the reserve have established it as a living laboratory for ground-truthing conservation tools and technologies. 
And finally and importantly, the Conservancy envisions a world where people and nature thrive. And I think that's why all of you all are here today, is to celebrate that, especially again on the toes of Earth Day. The words ring true here at the Bridgestone Nature Reserve, where we have engaged the community with our work, hosting local events and partnering with the academic institutions for scientific research and along with many of you as state agencies. The new Dry Creek Trail is yet another example of how the Nature Conservancy is committed to being a trusted local neighbor. And we we're pleased to have local staff member Britt Townsend, where's Britt, raise your hand, yay, I'm gonna call you out, um, as the face of the Conservancy. She has integrated herself into the community for over three years now, in fact, lives right down the street, and is an important role with our forest management at the reserve. Resources. And at Bridgestone, that's what we do, right? We, we want to make sure that we're using sustainable products. We're constantly looking at this. We're constantly trying to get better, challenging, challenging ourselves. And then the whole point of operating with nature, it it's really about how we're how we're operating every day, right? We go to our plants, what are we emitting? How are we how are we working with every day? What brings us to you know being in harmony with nature? And I, I think that says a lot about the donation and what was done there. Um, and then finally, um, um, on CO2, right? CO2 is, is visionary. It's something that we're all talking about now, but Bridgestone had it as a mission many, many years ago as a, as a front runner. And preserving natural lands like we have right here are certainly helping with what we are doing for um, CO2. And as, as Bridgestone, we've made the commitment that we will reduce 50% of our absolute global emissions of CO2 by 2030, striving to be carbon neutral by 2050. So let me tell you, being in this hunt, being in this battle right now in the competition and seeing what's out there, this is very, very challenging. So I also wanna make sure that um, I talk about this, this uh, partnership that we have with uh, the Nature Conservancy. Um, very welcoming. Um, myself and the team, we talk quite often about numerous things. As a matter of fact, uh, we're working on some carbon sequestering um, uh, projects in South Carolina. They were just at our Aiken facility, uh, Longleaf Pine program that we're doing. So the past two years, we've worked with the Conservancy um, in those particular efforts. So very much appreciated. Now, um, even now with the uh, with TDAC and all the work that is going on with the parks and being able to, to really give this back. And I think when I sit back and I look at the gift that was given and everything that was done, now seeing everything start to come together to be able to actually give this back to the public, being the just kept for something that Bridgestone has had for years. Again, not for financial gain, not for publicity, but for exactly what's going on here today for this uh, ribbon cutting event. So I'm um, ecstatic to be here and I'm still glad that Bridgestone is a, is a major partner in this and I hope we continue to be, okay? Thank you. Um, so I, I, wanna, I wanna start off a couple of points by uh, recognizing this is all kind of a family thing. It's not a big crowd with a booming speech. This is really just about family getting together out here and appreciating each other, appreciating our shared love for the Cumberland Plateau. And um, to share a little more love, I wanna invite Miss Miranda Sherrill uh, to come up and share the news that I suspect many of you have already heard, but wanna make sure everybody hears some of the hard work that uh, Miranda and her husband, Representative Paul Sherrill, have made sure uh, has gotten accomplished down in Nashville, Tennessee. Miranda. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry Paul couldn't be here this morning. He is still in session in Nashville, and uh, he asked me to come and say thank you to all of the partners and and all the individuals that's been involved in 